Hi, it's Cheryl of Caribou Country Lifestyle. So, the chicks have gotten quite a bit bigger. They are a week and three days old. So, within... Um, usually what we have to do is every week we have to check the chicks for pasty butt. So what that means is that they're, when they're pooping, sometimes it can get plugged up and we don't want the vent hole to get clogged with poop. So we have to check them once a week. And so what we usually do is we'll get a bowl with some, a little bit of dish soap and warm soapy water with the dish soap and with a cloth we'll clean it up get all the poop so it's not stuck to their bum anymore and then we take a q-tip and apply uh, just a layer a light layer of Vaseline uh, around that area and so that it will help prevent um, from it to get the poop pretty much just gets clogged up and so yeah we just need to help them along with that another thing that we do is we put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in their water and that's an antifungal antiviral it just helps them have that extra we only when we buy them feed we get them the non-medicated feed I was getting the organic feed but it is so pricey that it's just unbelievable the prices of feed uh, to begin with let alone trying to go organic so we just make sure that we get a non-medicated feed for them and then, of course, I was telling you about the brooders that we have. They're the Titan brooders. And those brooders, how it works is it's uh, the plate underneath the brooder. It gives out heat and it's just enough heat that they'll go under there and it keeps them warm. If it's cold out, the days are definitely getting warmer now. So they are don't seem to be going underneath the brooder as much and what's another thing that we do just making sure that we always put in a clean layer of pine shavings in the bottom of their little coop here and then we will be starting to give them a little bit of grit and so we also give them grit and the grit it is helps um, the chickens with their digestive system it helps to make it so that their digestive system functions well and breakdown of the food at, that they are eating like their um, non-medicated food it helps break that down also the grit helps grind down the food into in the gizzard and just basically keeping their digestive system happy so that's helpful for them so always making sure that they have clean water fresh bedding um, we started giving them grit we waited until after they were five days old and then we started giving them grit there's two kinds of grit you can get the small grit and then they have a larger grit and Right now, we just use the small one for these little chicks. So I thought I'd take you along. We've been uh, planting more of our seeds. It's May the 30th. So this week, we will be planting a lot of our plants out. So right now, I've just been planting seeds. So yesterday, I planted my zucchini this one is my black beauty zucchini I have my gold rush zucchini 
And then over here I have in this corner with the little tag there is my Peter Pan squash. Here is where I planted my asparagus in this long row all the way across to here. That's probably about 12 feet of asparagus and while I'm waiting for the asparagus I planted the asparagus roots in here. So in the meantime while I'm waiting for the asparagus to come up I have planted some bush beans. This is uh, just a regular green and it's the strike bush beans and then over on this side I have planted the dragon tongue bush bean. Now the dragon tongue it actually is a speckled bush bean so it is going I've never planted that before so it is good for just cooking and also you can dry use uh, collect the dried beans as well so they're pretty versatile this bed has not been planted it is going to be for tomatoes and peppers and in this corner here I'm going to be planting some flowers here I have onion sets planted and then on the end there's a little blue tag there and I have my uh, Chinese toy choy. I just planted that in the front I have planted some okra seeds I've never planted okra and along this side I just seen them starting to you kind of can see the little bit that is my bright lights Swiss chard that I've planted in this bed. In my next bed, these two little tags, I have a butter crunch lettuce coming up. It's just coming up here. And this one over here is my summertime crisp head lettuce. In front here is, on this side, is my rutabagas. In the front, I have planted fern leaf dill by seed. And over here, I have my Scarlet Nantes carrots planted. And I also planted a little bit of the solar yellow carrots as well. I think somebody's talking to me. Hello, ladies. Hi, how's it going? What do you need? I'm going to be bringing you a treat soon. Yes, I will. I will. The girls are getting big. They're well over 200 pounds now. We're still waiting until the end of July before we process them. In this bed here, I have just my annual bunching green onions in here. This is just a weed pull those out as I see them. Okay. So over here, these are my climbing roses that I sunk in the ground. I'm not sure if that one on the right is going to make it. The one on the left, it has buds coming up on it. Down this side where you see the green coming up, I have my leeks. <laughs> Sorry, not leeks. I have my kale, two different kinds of kale. So I have the dwarf green curled kale and then I have the natural Toscano kale. And on this side, I have some more types of lettuce. I have the musclin mix and then I have the little gem, which is a romaine lettuce that I've planted by seed and you can see the little seeds coming up in here and over here it's probably got the most coming up uh, and it's of course it's radishes so radishes are very quick growers they don't take long 
and then in behind there there's a little blue tag and I've planted some of the Tulsi holy basil so I have four kinds of radishes growing here the one in the back here that's the sparkler um, tip radish this one here is the china rose radish I have a early scarlet radish and this row here I actually had planted an, a lat bell radish and it was a uh, some radish seeds I had gotten from my sister because last year I couldn't find any more radish seeds with everything happening and COVID so she I went out to Saskatchewan and she gave me some radish seeds but uh, they didn't take so I ended up replanting that row forgetting that they didn't take last year and I ended up putting in some French breakfast so that shouldn't take long for those to come in and over here I have my beets so in this little row going there those are the golden Detroit beets in this back all the way along on this side that's my red ace beets and then these are the cylinder beets coming in here on the other side that will be growing up this cattle panel I have the um, pole beans and these are the blue lake pole beans that will be growing up this other side over in this bed I did have my ra raspberries that I had gotten from my sisters from Saskatchewan once I noticed that which ones had taken so I ended up digging them up because I got some of my raspberries in the mail and I got 10 plants in the mail and so I planted those over in the area that we had had the pigs first to begin with so I planted those and I was waiting for these ones to get some green on them and know which ones were going to be making it over the winter so I've dug those ones up as well and I've put them over into the other side and I will be showing you that too. So we'll just come over here and in this bed I have planted in these back two rows I have two kinds of spinach I have a or not spinach in the one back row this one here I have a spinach and that's the Avon oh, what is it called oh an Avon hybrid spinach and in the front it's the Bloomsdale spinach on this other side beside it this is my purple haze carrots that I've planted I just seen a little one I'm not sure if that's actually a carrot or not um, but and then the uh, down ba um, behind it is my solar yellow carrots and over on this side that will be growing up this panel that is going to be my peas and they are just a sugar snap pole peas I actually prefer to grow the sugar snap pole peas as opposed to regular peas because it's just easier to eat the snap peas I love snap peas I used to grow regular peas but I don't like shelling peas that that just takes too much time and yeah, that's I've decided that's not for me over here of course are my strawberries I think I am going to leave my strawberries they are getting flowers on them and they are going to be producing out some strawberries so I think I'm just going to leave them here for now but I will be putting some straw around these strawberries now that I've decided to leave them I did put a netting 
on the strawberries. You might not be able to see it, but I've tied it down with twist ties. Uh, I put this little picket fence up and then I put the netting on top of it. It's for the birds because once those strawberries come, the birds uh, will come and they will just peck at the strawberries and devour them. I was at somebody's yard. I was dropping my son off. He was going to mow somebody's lawn and I seen they had this netting over their strawberries and I just figured, oh my gosh, that's genius. So I went and picked up some netting, but I got a little ahead of myself because now that I've decided I'm going to keep these here, now I have to take the netting off, put the straw over around the strawberry plants, and then tie the netting back down. So I just might have made myself more work than I had wanted to. And I just want to look at this little creature here I just noticed. Can you see him? I don't know if he's a good caterpillar or a not a good caterpillar. At this point, I don't think any caterpillars are good, really. So, but first, look at this sour cherry tree. That has a lot of buds on it. We just I just bought this last year. I got it for Mother's Day. My husband bought it for me and it had quite a bit of foliage on it, quite a bit of uh, flowers and then the deer came along and of course ate all of it off. So it's nice to have this fence around here so that the deer can't demolish everything that you end up working hard for. Now with a sour cherry tree, uh, we are a zone three here in the caribou and this tree is actually a self fertilizing. So what that means, it's a self pollinator. You do not need another tree for it to produce fruit. Like with an apple tree, you need two of them. Um, a lot of your fruit trees you need to, but with a, a sour cherry tree, most of them are self-fertile and you don't need to have another sour cherry tree for it to produce fruit. So that's awesome. Okay, so all where the straw is, this I have dug up and I have planted my raspberries in here. So let me come around. So I don't know if you can see. I have one there and the little stick sticking up over there. So there's my other one. All together I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I have twenty-five raspberry plants now here. And my husband was saying, like I would just had put straw around the base of the raspberries and that's basically to hold the moisture in. But he was saying that it would be better off to have straw all over everything and that will keep the foliage down as far as the grass and the weeds. So next, I'll be digging up and I will be planting my elderberry bushes and also my hascaps. 
I've also set up all of my seedlings that I've started. I've got them everywhere. I put them underneath my deck because then they would be out of the elements of the wind. I've got zinnias, I've got morning glories, cucamelons, I have cilantro, my cauliflower, this is my alyssum, all my tomato plants, more tomato plants and peppers. I have my geraniums. These are balsam and also my hollyhocks, petunias, stalks. I have, they're everywhere. I have marigolds. I have more zinnias, more geraniums, gazanias and all my pepper plants here too and I even have one right there it's got some little flowers on it getting ready to set out some flowers on that pepper plant what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this picnic table over and drag it up so that I can put these on here because a lot of this like some of those looks pretty sketchy the way I have them just haphazardly sitting on that so I'm gonna have to change that there that looks better now I have everything all put together eventually I'd like to get a greenhouse but that's just not in the cards yet I still have one there and another one right there and that's okay okay so over here they look a lot better so the ones on the left those are my hascaps and I will be planting those I had to look that up and hascaps you can grow plant them four to five feet between each other and the elderberries you want to plant them, those are those little guys down there, you want to give them six feet distance between each of them. And uh, from what I understand, the elderberries like sun, part shade, but the hascaps like full sun, I guess they could have some shade. Look at all those lobelia, or not a lobelia, oh my gosh. These are the alyssum, and a lot of these are going to be going in my garden, just plunking them in or around plants. I have snapdragons, I have lobelia. Those are those, oh, they're the million, I call them the million bells. But the actual name for these is calabracoa. I can never remember that. Calabracoa. I love these. And then I got another one, and it's a mix. And I'm going to take all these hanging baskets and usually you can get three or four plants in a hanging basket and what I do is I just take them all apart and split them up and make new baskets or planters for on my deck so I've got the verbena the calabracoa and purple verbena and then the purple calabracoa. I have the rocket snapdragons in here. And those, which lobelia are these? Let me take a look. The Cambridge blue lobelia. And over here, I have a citronella plant. I like to have that on my deck just to have that citronella to keep the mosquitoes at bay. I have two blueberry plants. Those will also be planted over in my berries. And I just picked up a basil today because the
the basil I started is like this big, maybe that big. So I decided to pick up another basil plant and I'm just going to plant my little basil in with that big basil. And that'll be on my deck in a little pot so I have easy access to it. I went to the store, I was hoping to get some mint plant because I plant started some spearmint but I have one little plant so I wanted to get another one because I like to have the mint leaves. I like to have it in my water. Sometimes I'll do uh, mint leaves and cucumber slices in my water. Really super good. Sometimes I'll do lemon or lime and mint. That's really good in water too. So, but I think that's about all. So I have one more thing I need to show you. Well, it's not that big metal monstrosity, but look at those lilacs. Like those, that is just full of lilacs. So this metal monstrosity of a, what I call a robot, that was left here on the property. It was actually down in the dog kennel. And that's a commercial smoker, apparently. But we did get my brother-in-law's trailer and we are planning to use it to pick up a couple more round bales of straw because we definitely need more straw, especially for over in uh, berries in the fruit side of it. But my husband got these big logs. I don't know what he's going to use them for. But I was asked him, well, how the heck did you get them off the trailer by yourself? And so he's such a MacGyver. He tied a chain around the logs and then attached it to the tree. And these were on this trailer over here. So they were on the trailer. He attached the chain around the logs and then pulled the trailer away and the logs slid right off and then he has these railway ties that he has the logs on top of. Now, of course now he says he can't get the chain off of it but I'm sure he'll figure something out. He's good at that. More lilacs. I have probably three different patches with lilacs. I absolutely love them. So anyways, we borrowed my brother-in-law's trailer here. We're going about an hour away from where we live to go pick up two round bales of straw this week. And we still need one more cattle panel. Look at that. All those beds. What a glorious sight. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I'm finding it hard to do these videos when you work all week and then you're trying to get things done in the evenings and then you're trying to get more done in the weekend. So I'm going to sign off. My battery's getting low and um, I'll see you until next time. If you have any comments, put them down below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit it and we'll talk again next time.